Welcome to Michigan's World War I Centennial News Report. I'm Dennis Skupinski. During tonight's report, we're going to learn about the history of the red poppy and why it's associated with veterans. We're also going to learn about the history of Veterans Day. Then we're going to go over to London and talk to Dr. Andrew Murison, head of the World War I Centennial Committee in the United Kingdom. Then finally, we're going to take a look at the internet. On November 11, 1919, veterans marched through the streets of Detroit. They were celebrating the one-year anniversary of the end of the First World War. It was called Armistice Day. Armistice Day was a day dedicated to the causes of world peace and to be thereafter celebrated and known as Armistice Day. Armistice Day became a legal holiday on May 13, 1938. After World War II, Congress de decided on June 1st, 1954, to include all veterans, and now it's named Veterans Day. As part of our World War I Michigan Centenary News, I wanted to show you what was going on in other parts of the world. In the United Kingdom, David Cameron appointed Dr. Andrew Murison, a member of parliament, as head of the World War I Centennial Commission in the United Kingdom. Here's a few words from Dr. Murison. Looking at what has been achieved already uh, in terms of the work of the very large number of organizations that have an interest in this and how government can help and provide some leadership and encouragement for what I think is going to be a very important commemoration in our national life, not just in 2014, but for the four years leading up to Armistice Day in 2018. I give you a flavour of what I think the outcome will be, and that is a tapestry of very local, very grassroots commemorations that will be drawn together in some sort of national framework. And I think the appetite in this country is uh, for projects based in communities uh, looking at this conflict at a very human level. Already there are lots of small scale projects uh, that commemorate the lives and contributions of people that were participants. Thank you Mr. Merson for that information on what is happening in the United Kingdom. You'll notice I'm wearing a red poppy. The red poppy became associated with Veterans Day and especially the First World War. But it didn't start there. The Red Poppy actually was associated with veterans and soldiers since the Napoleonic Wars. A writer back then wrote about how he found poppies growing on the graves of soldiers in the battlefield. The Red Poppy became the symbol for World War I remembrance when on May 3, 1915, a Canadian surgeon, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, wrote a poem in Flanders Fields while attending the funeral of one of his friends. At the end of the First World War, a professor at the University of Georgia named Moina Michaels conceived the idea of wearing poppies as a symbol of remembrance for those who served during the First World War. After the war was over, Professor Michaels taught a lot of disabled servicemen, realizing the need to provide financial and occupational support for these servicemen. She pursued the idea of selling silk poppies as a means of raising funds to assist disabled veterans. In 1921, her efforts resulted in a poppy being adopted as a symbol of remembrance for the war veterans by the American Legion Auxiliary. Known as the Poppy Lady for her humanitarian efforts, Michael received numerous awards during her lifetime. In 1948, the U.S. Postal Service issued commemorative stamp honoring her life. Now that you know why the red poppy is a symbol of remembrance for veterans of the First World War and all veterans, there's something else you might want to look at. On the web at Wikipedia, they have Operation Great War Centennial. They have a number of topics there that you can either contribute to or you can simply look up and find out information on. Something else that's on the web is the World War I Research Institute. It's at St. Helena High School in St. Helena, California. 
And what's happening here is a teacher and some students have started a World War I research project where they've got a museum started. And they're doing research on World War I topics. This is an excellent example of high school students doing something out of the ordinary and also could be a great project for clubs, libraries, or museums to get students involved. Thank you for watching Michigan's World War I Centennial News Report. If you have questions or comments, please email them to me. You'll see the email addresses running through the credits. Our next report will feature Henry Ford, the controversial figure who tried to stop World War I all by himself. Once again, thank you for watching Michigan's World War I Centennial News Report.